Welcome to the second video of the MVMED Unfolded series, a complete guide to the MVMED software. In the last video, we talked about all the features the holistic MVMED model incorporates in order to deliver the most accurate microclimate simulation possible. We also created the project that we will use for the rest of this series. In this video, we will cover the most prominent feature of the urban landscape, buildings. But before we can begin constructing buildings in our model area, we first need to define the materials that they are made out of. To access these features in NVMED, first we start up the NVMED headquarter and go to the Data and Settings tab. There we click on the button labeled Database Manager. Once this button is clicked, a new window will appear with eight different tabs, each responsible for a different feature of the urban landscape. The first thing we need to do is select our project under the Project drop-down menu. After that, we can begin creating and modifying the features of our project. In this video, we are talking about buildings, which include materials, wall constructions, single walls and green facades. However, today we will only be focusing on materials. Materials are what our walls and ultimately what our buildings will be made out of. If we click on the small arrow next to the System Materials menu, we can see a variety of material classes that come standard with MVMED. If we click on a category, like default for example, we can see the different types of basic materials that MVMED provides to the user right away. If we click on one of the materials listed here, for example default insulation, we can see the values of a variety of parameters that each material in MVMED is defined by. The first parameter is the database ID, which is a six character code for the material that MVMED uses in the simulation process. Each ID must be unique within the databases. Otherwise, NVMET will prioritize the ID within the project or user database over the ID in the system database. The next parameters are the name, color and the default thickness of the material. The name should be self-explanatory. The color corresponds to how the material will appear in the 2D or 3D visualized area of spaces. Default thickness is how thick the material is by default, unless it is modified later as a part of a wall. This value is in terms of meters. The next parameters are what define the material in terms of simulation processing and results in NVMED. Absorption refers to how much shortwave radiation is absorbed by the material and is transformed into internal heat energy. For example, a black wall has a higher absorption than a white wall. Transmission refers to how much shortwave radiation passes through the material without being absorbed or reflected. For example, glass has a high transmission rating, while most solid objects have zero. Reflection refers to how much shortwave radiation is reflected off the material. For example, a white wall would have a very high reflection value. Please note that the values of absorption, transmission and reflection must add up to 1 within the material's values. Emissivity refers to a material's effectiveness in emitting energy as long-wave thermal radiation. The closer the material's emissivity value is to 1, the easier the material cools itself by emitting heat energy. Metals have a very low emissivity, which is why we don't feel heat being relatively close to a hot piece of metal, but we do feel heat being close to a sidewalk with the same temperature, as natural materials like stone have a much higher emissivity. Specific heat is a physical property of materials that refers to the amount of heat energy that needs to be supplied to a given amount of the material in order to change its temperature by a single unit. This is why sand, which has a low specific heat, is very hot on a sunny day, while water, which has a much higher specific heat, remains cool. Thermal conductivity refers to a material's ability to transfer heat through itself. For example, metals usually have a high thermal conductivity, as heat applied to one part of the substance transfers to the other parts quickly. Materials like styrofoam have very low thermal conductivity so heat applied to one part of it stays in the local area of where it was applied. Finally, density refers to how much mass is present within a specific volume of a substance. In the real world, there are thousands of different types of materials, more than the few found here in the system database. Therefore, NVMED allows its users to create their own materials. As we stated in the previous video, the NVMED system database cannot be modified in any way, so we need to find the material closest to the one we want to create and make a clone of that material in our project database. 
starting with a similar material is not necessary. However, doing so will give you default values for a variety of parameters that are similar or the same to the ones that you want. Let's make our own insulation material based off a sample of polystyrene insulation board. First, we will left click on the default insulation material to highlight it. We then right click on the material and choose Create user copy from item. This action creates a clone of the material in our project database. If we now click on our clone material under our project database folder, we can see the same values to the right as we did in the system database folder. However, we can now edit all of the values belonging to our material. First, let's change the database ID of our new material. This is important, because if we don't change the database ID, by default it has the same ID as the one we cloned it from in the system database. Envimat will not be able to use that system material and our new one in the same project. This problem can also be seen by the small warning sign over the color of the system material. To change the database ID, we simply click on the current ID and edit the text. Let's call it 0100PS. Once we have changed the ID to something the system database does not use, we can see that the warning sign has disappeared. We can also change the name and the color in the same way. In order to change a parameter like thickness or absorption, we can click on the three dots on the right of the respective parameter values and change them as we would the name. It is important to take note of the units of measurement that each parameter uses in order to make sure we are entering the correct values. When we are done changing the values, it is important that we remember to save our database by clicking on Save Database. We now created our very own material we can use throughout the rest of this project and we learned how to create as many materials as we want. If you would like to know more about the Database Manager, please check out our Getting Started series. If you would like to know more about the calculations and physics that make up the EnviMed software, check out our three-part expert lesson titled Building Physics, which you can also find on YouTube. The links to the videos can be found in the YouTube description of this video. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one, where we will put our new material to good use, covering the next step of creating a building in EnviMed.